Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I think I'm taller than Sheila Kuehl. <laughs> just, just a little bit. 40 years ago, there were no hotlines, no rape crisis centers, no shelters for battered women, no counseling, no safe places, nowhere to go. There was no East LA Women's Center, no Haven House, no sojourn services for battered women, no Calcasa or CPEDV, no Genesis Center, no rape treatment center at Santa Monica UCLA Hospital, no Center for Pacific Asian Family, no futures without violence. Started by feminist visionaries in 1971, POV, then LACAW, was one of the first agencies of its kind in the country. This was at the height of the Civil Rights Movement, the Anti-Vietnam War Movement, and the Women's Liberation Movement. And the Gay Liberation Movement was just starting. It was a time when the consciousness raising about inequality and violence against women entered into the collective unconscious and exited as organizing, which brought the secret epidemic of violence against women out into the open. Those early feminists built organizations to do something about it. What's great about tonight is that this room is filled with people who have been active for many of those years as advocates and supporters, allies, and donors. And also in this room are folks who are not yet born and yet are becoming equally engaged. So let's hear it for all the younger people taking over. In 1971, to remind those of you who happened to be there then, the Pentagon Papers were released, the microprocessor was invented, which launched, launched the digital age. Jim Morrison from The Doors died in Paris. That's a shout out to Robbie Rutstein, by the way. The US Supreme Court upheld busing as a legal means to integrate racially segregated schools. Nixon started to bring troops home from Vietnam, where I was living at the time, and my oldest daughter was born. And take me for a drink later, and I'll tell you some of my war stories. <laughs> and out of all that time, a beautiful song was written by John Lennon called Imagine. There are two people in our audience tonight who exemplify the co-creation of this movement. Barry Levy, who, one of the early founders of LACAW, and the organizer of all the first coalitions, and Ruth Slaughter, who wrote the first grant that started the first shelter for battered women, Haven House in Pasadena. Will you stand up? <laughs> Over the years, POV continued to be a leader in developing key programs like women's self-defense, deaf and disabled services, teen dating violence prevention, and recruiting and training volunteers from the diverse LA community. Our decades-old social work internship program with UCLA and USC, the use of digital technology and digital stories and our work in building youth leadership, and our efforts in making the connection between family violence and gang violence. We are currently involved in several national and state initiatives. The Start Strong Healthy Teen Relationship Program, and you saw some of the middle schoolers from that program, funded by Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, the Blue Shield of California Foundation, the Ms. Foundation National Child Abuse Prevention Program, the Engaging Men Initiative from the Violence Against Women Office, and the California Strong Field Project, funded by, once again, Blue Shield, thank you again, Blue Shield, for all that you do. We are doing youth violence prevention organizing in Boyle Heights and South LA as part of the California Endowments Initiative. We are announcing tonight the establishment of our new national advisory board to help POV expand our national impact. And Debbie Lee, the associate director from Futures Without Violence, hopefully got here tonight. She was supposed to be here tonight. Is Debbie Lee here? Hey, Debbie. The Fut Futures Without Violence, they changed their name too. They, they, many of you may know them as the uh, 
um, the fund for, wait, the Family Violence Prevention Fund. See, I already forgot their old name. <laughs> the staff at POV is extraordinary. We, ha we, have, we have an old school work ethic, ethic. We work in teams and we work hard. We often hire from our volunteer pool. We're better to populate the workforce than from volunteers who have demonstrated commitment and dedication. As a nonprofit, we are job creators for the social good. I mean, we're real job creators. We're not imitating those people who say they're job creators. <laughs> I want to acknowledge the POV Board of Directors, made up of women and men who have guided me in this agency for many years in wise and meaningful ways under the meticulous leadership of Deborah Klar, the president of our board. And I want to acknowledge two other distinctive peace over violence people and who are having anniversaries, Kathy Friedman and Peggy Reyna. Two instrumental and brilliant women who have dedicated their lives to peace over violence. Kathy has been my right hand and co-conspirator, program developer and grant writer extraordinaire for 25 years. Where's Kathy? And Peggy Rayner, the national pioneer and originator of domestic and sexual violence services for the deaf and disabled, is celebrating 22 years with POV. Peggy's over here. Peggy is an advocate's advocate and a true overcomer of obstacles. And when I need an advocate, Peggy is my go-to gal. October is DV Awareness Month. And I don't remember a month like this one whereby we have had so many lethal reminders in one cluster, in one month. The domestic violence massacre in Seal Beach, where the stalker batterer murdered his ex-wife, Michelle Marie Fournier, and eight others, customers at a beauty salon. And the other heartbreaking tragedy of the killing of 17-year-old Cindy Santana by her 18-year-old knife-wielding ex-boyfriend on campus at Southeast High School in Southgate in front of other students. And tonight with us is one of the mental health, the head of mental health at Southeast High School is here. Could you stand up, just wave to us? She's been handling all of the post-traumatic, post-traumatic stress that's continuing at this high school. I'm sorry, I don't know her. I can't remember her name because I just, Steve Zimmer brought her and I just met her tonight yeah. and I don't remember. What's her name? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> the same week as this teen relationship violence tragedy occurred, POV had success with the passage of our teen dating violence prevention and healthy relationship policy at LAUSD. We <laughs> We were all set to go when Cindy was murdered. We were hoping to not lose another girl or another boy whose life of freedom will now be lost to prison. But it was not to be. The success, the success of this policy is bittersweet. We began working on this policy 10 years ago with two leaders at LA Unified School District who have persevered with us. Steve Zimmer, LAUSD school board member, and Lori Vallant, former POV board member, and LAUSD director of health services. Both Lori and Steve are with us tonight. This policy work has been recently funded through our Start Strong grant. Thank you once again, Blue Shield. Blue Shield is in the house tonight. 
We are looking forward to implementation and modeling how to do this in other school districts across the country. Tonight we look back a bit, but let's not stare, because what is most important is what we are doing now and what we will be doing to prevent violence in the future. I just found out that I have been selected to receive a Stanton Fellowship awarded by the Durfee Foundation. The Stanton is a two-year funded opportunity to work on an intractable problem. The intractable problem that I have chosen is, guess what? Can you guess? Yeah, 40 years of, violence against, of the Violence Against Women movement but we still have so much violence against women and girls. So my topic is 40 years of violence against women, where do we go from here? I'm hoping that through the convening of think tanks, interviews, research, engaging new thought partners, cross-generational conversations, that we will be able to come up with a blueprint for the next 40. I'm hoping that many of you will help me in this inquiry. I don't see this as my project alone, but as a collective endeavor that will engage new people and new thinking. I'm interested in us collectively inquiring about what the next paradigm shifts need to be, the next organizational shifts, self-reflection about how structures and policies that we have created may also be obstacles in the way of progress the connection internationally with women and girls all over the world, the next dots to be connected, the next leaders, who will they be? At POV, we are already on to our next big idea. I always have fun coming up with new ideas. My staff kind of run out of the room and I say, hey, I was thinking. Um, it is the creation of a children and youth center adjacent to our POV space located in downtown LA. We plan to expand our programming to serve children ages 3 to 12 who are exposed to, witnesses to, and directly impacted by sexual and domestic violence. This new space would also expand POV's youth violence prevention programs by offering on-site, after-school programs, youth leadership training programs, digital media training, and curricula on healthy relationships. Some of our youth leaders have already put in their ideas of what they want to see happen there. And believe me, these kids are very empowered. If my board president had her way, there would be POV violence prevention centers in lots of neighborhoods across LA. Let's take a look. Peace over violence prevents, intervenes, and helps people heal from violence across the lifespan. Friends. Friends. Letters. Education. Healing. Learn. Lead. Play. Teamwork. <laughs> Laughter. Help us build a state-of-the-art children and youth violence prevention center in Los Angeles. This is our new dream. We need about $500,000 to develop and program the POV Youth Center to keep it funded for three years. We need help. We've raised about $175,000 so far. So if you do the math, we need another $325,000. We are seeking grants, of course. And in this economy, we are looking under every rock. If you are sitting on any rocks, Get up, look under that rock, or if you know of any places for us to go, please let us know. So I'm asking you to grab one of those envelopes on the table. There are pens on the table. Richard, will you please turn up the lights? Consider making a gift to this new big idea. No gift is too small. And of course, goes without saying, no gift is too big. Think about what it will mean to have a place to help children and adolescents like the kids you saw up here on the stage tonight and the youth leaders that have joined us tonight. Children did not invent violence. They inherit it from the adult world and they suffer greatly 
from this legacy. I'm asking you to dig a little deeper tonight. Some of you here are, came as invited guests. Hopefully you are inspired tonight by the contributions made by all of our humanitarian awardees that you've met. Perhaps you've been moved by the feeling in this room of being part of a movement that is committed to violence-free and healthy relationships. Maybe you want to join with us. We invite you to make violence prevention part of your values, to make healing for others a concern of yours, to make doing no harm part of your life portfolio. Volunteers are coming around to pick up envelopes. As, you need envelopes here? Uh-oh. Need some envelopes. Pass around those envelopes. <laughs> Thanks, Frank. Frank jumped over. Fra Jahan, Frank jumped over tables to give you an envelope. As the evening progresses, as we celebrate, educate, and activate, please consider writing a check, or you can use a credit card. Some of you, does anybody have cash anymore? Nobody has cash anymore. We depend on individual donors as much as we depend on grants to do what we do, which is social service, social empowerment, social change, and social justice. Look at your hand. Jahan had two pens in her hand. I thank you for helping us accomplished this. My dream before I retire, and I'm not planning that just yet, I have way too much to do, is for POV to be able to intervene and prevent violence across the lifespan, from children to elders. Help us add this children's piece and expand the youth piece. You won't regret it. We will use your donation well and we will make you proud as we together build healthy relationships, families, and communities free from sexual and interpersonal and domestic violence. We have a gift for each of you. Please make sure to pick up our 40th anniversary limited edition commemorative poster. It portrays our peace engine art over violence, law over violence, voice over violence, unity, and our vision. I am enamored of a theory of change called the peacemaking pyramid. It's a theory of deep change that aims for a change of heart, from a heart at war to a heart at peace. As a community, we desperately want to fix what is wrong. So we choose to attack the problem which is the problem which is at the top of the pyramid, that which can be seen. The war on drugs, the war on gangs, the war on women, the war on crime, the war on war. But have you noticed? We never seem to win those wars. The peacemaking pyramid model suggests that we put our energy into going deeper, underneath to the bottom of that pyramid, spending the necessary time building relationships, listening and learning, teaching and communicating and connecting. This theory of change focuses on helping things go right by building on relationships and strengths, bearing witness to and creating pathways of compassion to each other. Our vision is a world without violence, where no child is abused, no wife battered, no friend raped. A world without terror, without threats, without wounds from intentional acts, where the strong provide for the vulnerable, where the vulnerable become empowered, where every kind of family is safe and secure. And girls and boys and women and men have a fair and equal chance at the pursuit of happiness in a tolerant and talented society. That's a world I'm sure we would all like to live in. Let's get to it. Thank you so much.